Welcome, I'm Chef Deborah from Rocus Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina. Please visit us on our Facebook and Instagram pages and on our website at rocusbakery.com where you can view our online store. And we ship nationwide as well as looking at our photo gallery and hit the TV tab and you can watch season one of our 13 shows where we do all types of wonderful pastries and desserts. Today we're working on this second episode of a three episode uh, series on uh, chocolate dessert boards. So in our, in our previous series we worked on some really nice uh, chocolate uh, salami and some other things and now we're going to do a couple of cookies. So we're going to do a brown sugar shortbread cookie. It's a true shortbread, it has no leavening in it, just brown sugar, lots of butter, flour, great vanilla, vanilla bean paste and salt. So we're gonna go ahead and start with three quarters of a cup of good quality butter. Get a spatula here. Remember, we do not use margarine, in, in, especially in a shortbread, we use butter. And we're gonna just turn the, turn the mixer on low just to break up the butter a little bit. And then to that, we're going to add one cup of brown sugar. And we're just going ahead and cream that until the sugar and the butter come together and it's nice and smooth. We don't want to beat air into this, so we don't want it to turn to a light brown and get really super fluffy. We just want it to come together and, and be nice and creamed until you can still feel a little bit of grit of the brown sugar in the butter. I'm going to go ahead and scrape the bowl down and scrape the beater down too. Make sure we get all the ingredients incorporated. And I decided to make this brown sugar shortbread for the chocolate dessert board to add a different variety and flavor palette uh, to the dessert board because these are traditionally served uh, dipped in chocolate ganache and then sprinkled with toasted pecans. But on our dessert board, we're gonna have chocolate sauce so the guests can dip their own if they want to. So that's creamed well enough. So we're going to go ahead and add, I have one teaspoon of vanilla extract and a teaspoon of vanilla bean paste in here to give that real nice rich vanilla bean flavor. And again, we'll stop and scrape the bowl down. And then we'll gradually add the three cups of flour, like in one cup, cup increments, uh, so that um, the butter and the sugar can absorb it easier. If we just dump the whole thing in, it'll just uh, take a minute to, to come together. And we don't want these cookies to be tough. We want them to be nice and soft. We don't want to develop the gluten too much in them. So we're just going to put the salt in there. And we're just going to stir it with our fingers to mix it up a little bit. And then we're just going to go ahead and just on slow speed, just add the flour a little bit at a time. And what I have found that if your flour is extra dry, there's not a lot of moisture in your flour, and it looks like the dough is a little bit crumbly, you can add a tablespoon of whole milk just to hydrate the dough a little bit, but no more than that. And we'll let that mix and do its thing and uh, it should come together here in a minute. So our dough is mixed and we're just going to go ahead and uh, clean this, clean the beater off real quick because we don't want to leave all that cookie goodness on the beater unless of course you have a cookie monster in your house that likes raw cookie dough. Then of course you have to feed the monster. <laughs> Let me show you how the dough is supposed to look. So you want it to be nice and moist like this so it's moldable. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a two tablespoon scoop and I'm just going to fill it. We're not going to drop this by, by a round shape. We're actually going to roll these into little logs. And if, if this is too big of a cookie for you, you can, you can cut it in half and make them smaller like this. And we're just going to shape them a little bit into just a little log like that and put them on the tray. And that's about it. And we're going to go ahead and uh, fill our tray here and put them in a 350 degree oven for about 14 to 17 minutes, depending on the heat of your oven. Uh, so make sure you temp your oven. If you don't have an oven thermometer, that's a good thing to have. So as soon as these cookies are done and cooled a little bit, we'll be back and I'll show you how to finish them off. We'll see you in a few minutes. So our cookies are just about done. I'm going to go take them out of the oven and let them cool. And then we're going to go ahead and make our chocolate amaretti. So let me go get those cookies. I'll be right back. 
Okay, now for this recipe, it is gluten-free. It doesn't have any flour at all, either almond or regular flour. So we're looking at one and a quarter cups of almond paste, which you can find in any grocery store now. It's in a little tube, a little white box about this big. So one and a quarter cups is about 10 ounces. Uh, so I think the tubes might be eight, so you probably have to buy a couple unless you have the recipe. And this does make quite a few if you use the, like the two tablespoon scoop. So we have uh, one and a quarter cups of almond paste. We have uh, one cup of granulated sugar, uh, a quarter cup of egg whites, room temperature. And then we have a half a cup of powdered sugar and a quarter cup of cocoa. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be putting this almond paste into the uh, machine and we're going to break it up just a little bit and it's going to kind of slap and make all kinds of noise in the machine so I'm not going to talk while that's going on. And once it's broken up a little bit we're going to go ahead and, and put in the, the sugar and we're just going to go ahead and let that process until the sugar is incorporated into the almond paste. It takes a couple of minutes for that to happen and it should look like fine like sand uh, by the time it's done you can also do this in a food processor if you have a small food processor and it'll take just you know 15 or 30 seconds of pulsing but you still have to add the other ingredients that's why I just do it in the mixer so let's go ahead it's, it's good to go now so we're going to go ahead and add our egg whites to the mix Then I'm going to turn the mixer off and then add the powdered sugar and the cocoa. And if you want to, you can mix the, the cocoa and the sugar together. You don't have to, but you can. And when you turn this back on, turn it on low so that you don't get this poof of powdered sugar and cocoa. Both are known to do that in your face and all over your clothes. And this is another cookie that comes together so fast. And it's just a beautiful dark chocolate. Let me show you what it looks like here. And it's nice to be able, we will have a couple of items, our, our Torte Caprese, uh, and then these cookies on your, board, on your board for those who are gluten sensitive or who choose not to eat uh, gluten products. So this is what the cookie dough should look like. It's gonna be a little grainy, as you can see, and if you touch it, it'll feel a little bit grainy. That's because of the almond paste and the sugar. The sugar hasn't completely dissolved in it yet. So we're just gonna go ahead and scoop some of these out, and we're gonna bake them in a 350 degree oven for about 17 minutes. And using a scoop makes it nice because it ensures that all of the cookies are the same size. Like I said in one of my other episodes, I, my grandkids, when they were small, if they, they couldn't, one couldn't have bigger or smaller than the other because it was like, hers is bigger than mine or his is bigger than mine. And so we always use scoops. Of course, in the bakery, we do it just because of um, cost effectiveness and making sure that everything is the same size for our customers. So we'll go ahead and put these in the oven, 350 degrees for about 17 minutes. And this is Chef Deborah from Roca's Bakery in Greensboro, North Carolina, signing off on this episode. And we look forward to seeing you in our next one. Bon appetit.